Polling stations have opened in Iran, where voters are casting ballots for members of parliament and a key religious body called the Assembly of Experts. This year's election is seen as a measure of public sentiment toward Iran's establishment following mass protests that began in 2022. Authorities are hoping for a big turnout, unlike the last parliamentary elections in 2020. That poll saw the lowest turnout since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Iran is in the middle of an economic crisis and has been racked by protests. The signs are everywhere and the messaging is clear. Iran has been scrambling to boost voter turnout ahead of Friday's election. It's introducing electronic voting in several cities and the number of female candidates vying for a seat is more than double what it was in the last parliamentary election in 2020. But the government's efforts appear to be falling on deaf ears. Personally, I will not take part in this election because the results of the last two elections were not good. The biggest problem with the election is the people's lack of trust in parliament. Political distrust and an ailing economy have helped fuel voter apathy. Although the elections are seen as a crucial barometer for legitimacy, the government's own surveys show participation will be well below 50%. Friday's vote includes polls for members of parliament and the assembly of experts who have the power to appoint Iran's supreme leader. The country's system of pre-approving candidates has led to mass disqualifications and the removal of true choice, according to critics of the current hardline government. This time, the word election is completely meaningless. It should be called an anti-election or a non-election. The election is rejected by the people, and the Islamic Republic cannot sell it to them. The memory of Masa Amini is also casting a long shadow over this year's vote. The 22-year-old Kurdish Iranian died after she was taken into police custody for allegedly violating the Islamic dress code. Her death led to a wave of mass protests against the hijab law and other social issues in 2022. The movement was violently crushed by authorities, but the demands for change and an end to the Islamic Republic's rule endure. Well, for more on the election, I spoke earlier with Sarah Bazubandi. She's a Marie Curie fellow at the Giga Institute of Middle East Studies in Hamburg. I asked her how much of a problem a low turnout, a uh, low voter turnout would be for the government in this election. Yes, it definitely is a, a serious problem because um, the, maintaining an image uh, for the government is quite important. The Iranian government has invested a lot in its information war in the past years. Uh, it has invested a lot in discourse manipulation. It has invested a lot in uh, portraying itself as a legitimate and wanted and popular government. Um, it has used ideological uh, uh, cards. It has used political cards. It has basically tried every trick in its arsenal to maintain that image and it's quite important for them uh, especially for example in the report was mentioned that the number of women in this election the number of women candidates in this election has increased right after the disastrous uh, violent crackdown of 2020 uh, this is a desperate uh, attempt by the government to shift the narrative to change its image and especially for at the global level this is very important for them Tell us, Sarah, more about why voters are reluctant to participate in this election. Um, again, I'm going to refer to the wonderful report that you had put together earlier. The people on the streets in Tehran have, have said that there is a, a complete loss of trust and hope uh, in change. Um, so basically, the, one of the key slogans during the past rounds of uprising in 2022 and before that was down with the regime. The people want a regime change. It means that they have no hope, they see no prospect of ch change in the current system. Uh, 
them. Um, and they are demonstrating this loss of hope and lack of um, uh, trust in the government in um, their very evident political apathy and not attending to the ballot points. Because regardless of what, whoever they vote, um, the situation has just always got worse. You know, we had um, since President Khatami, we had several um, internal uh, in, in, in a sickle fighting within the internal political elite in Iran, the so-called conservative camp versus the so-called reformist camp. Um, then Rouhani came. He presented himself as a moderate, pragmatic uh, president and the majlis and the elections around that. So, But nothing has changed. Mm. The rhetoric of the regime has not changed. Their strategic planning has not changed. Their prioritization of financial resources has not changed. Um, right. So people see no point in taking part in elections. Now, our report also mentioned the, the death of Masa Amini and the government crackdown that followed that. How does all of that factor into this election? Is it still an issue? Is it still in voters' minds? Of course it is, yes. Um, um, you know, if people are not on the streets actively protesting like they were um, in 2022, it doesn't mean that the problems are solved. Um, this is only, a, in my opinion, a temporary uh, silence because of the wide, you know, large-scale violent crackdown that was in, uh, used by the government during those protests. Um, and um, none of those issues have been addressed. Um, Still, the issue of um, hijab and the issue of women and the issue of personal private lives of Iranian citizens and, and their personal choices in their lives is still uh, controlled by the government in various uh, forms and shapes, from uh, internet control to surveillance to uh, right of access to public spaces and their, their personal attire. So none of these have changed. And also, you know, there are a lot of uh, corruption. For example, only a few weeks before this election, a group that is, according to Microsoft, a group called Adle Ali, a cyber um, a group, have uh, hacked supposedly um, the um, files and um, uh, records of um, the Iranian court system over the past years and revealed a lot of um, you know, the, uh, documents that have actually um, uh, shown that the scale of violence used in during those um, protests was even worse than people have assumed. And mm. it also revealed a lot of corruption and, you know, scandals, embezzlement, fraudulent activities, loss of public assets, loss of public funds. So people have, have, none of these issues have been resolved in the eyes of the people and they have uh, no hope that it, this majlis or this uh, council of experts will be able to change or willing for that matter to change any of this. Sarah, thank you very much for your analysis. That was Sarah Bazubandi from the Giga Institute of Middle East Studies.